Hi everybody, it's Robin from Southern California and today I'm going to show you how I made a feeder back in November that is 100% for me rodent proof. The squirrels can't get in it, the rats can't get in it, the mice can't get in it. I put it in the garden, I wanted to be sure it worked and it did. And I know a lot of you have been asking and saying that you've got some issues, you know, with different rodents. So I'm going to show you how I made my feeder for a dollar. It can be free even if you have different components to use for yours. So I picked up some really simple items from the 99 cent store. And you can find them at almost anywhere. Any of your small stores, big stores, they probably have all kinds of stuff. Like shoe boxes, like... Uh, um, let's go to about the second one. Like this. It came with a lid. It's kind of clear. I like this. This was a dollar. So I needed that. And then the dollar stores now are getting in the tomato steaks. They're two packs. And I got them for a dollar. I showed you in the other videos how you can put two of these together if you want to make it taller. And then you don't need much. All you need is some zip ties and I use zip ties for everything. A whole bag costs a dollar. You can use anything to make holes. I use a soldering iron, which I also got at the dollar store. But if you have to go to one of the hardware stores, you can get them anywhere at the hardware stores for about four to ten dollars. And I bet you once you get one of these and start using it for flower pots and different things, it's going to be your favorite tool. And that's basically all you need. So here you're going to see exactly how I put this together. It was so simple. You just needed to get your zip ties out and use zip ties. You can use bread ties if you want to use bread ties. And whenever you've got, you can use wires, but with the zip ties, I find them the easiest thing to use. And then you want to position the pole in the middle because it's going to be balanced. Now, I decided to use the lid to help give more stability to it. You don't have to do that. I just put the lid together and figured it would give it more stability for the whole unit. And so I made two holes. And with the two holes um, on either side and then putting in a zip tie, it gives me stability to know that, I guess the unit, I should say, stability because it's going to have extra strength with that extra plastic lid on it. You don't have to use it. You could have gone just straight with it. But I decided since I had it, I paid for it, had no other use for it, that I would put it together. There is a lip on this one. So I made sure that when I put the pole on, it goes to the lip, not past the lip. That also gives it stability. So here you see how I'm putting in the zip ties. It's so easy. You can't believe it. The main thing you want to do with these containers is get one as straight as possible. Try not to get one that's got a taper to it. Look for something really, really straight. Real quick, here's another one I bought at the dollar store. I could have used this unit as well as you're watching that because this is very straight and I could have just put on a stick onto this one too. So any type of container will work, but you want to make sure that the stick is going to go straight into the container, right? And that's basically it. Now you, I put the lid on, and like I said, it, you'll see as I'm building it, it will give a lot of stability to it. Then I made holes on the bottom. Now the reason I make holes on the bottom is if you've got it out there and it rains, you want to make sure it doesn't fill up with water and you don't end up with a bird bath. This is not a bird bath. This is a bird feeder. So this way if it rains, the water can go out. It will drain out. And then as far as purchase, I went around the yard and I found different purchase I liked and I cut a bunch, a bunch of branches off and decided which one I liked the best. And I put mine on the front. You can put it anywhere you want. You can put multiple perches on it. But right now I just put one on the front and it's working fine in the garden. And again, zip tie. If you don't have zip ties, you can use a little wire, bread tie. You can use string if you want to, but the zip ties really do last. And I and they're so cheap. I can't see not having a bag of zip ties. I bought this bag last year and I'm still using it. And you get them in all different colors. You get them clear, you can get them in different colors. Just make sure it's really snug, put on the perch, 
and you'll see, you know, it's going to be snug in the way you want it. And then clip it off. You don't need all the pieces hanging because the birds aren't going to land on it. So just get it out of the way. And then make sure the perch sits there really good and, you know, strong. It's not moving around. You don't want the birds to be flying all over. That um, they can land on it, have stability on the perch. I put multiple zip ties on that as well. And that's basically it. And then I just trimmed it down. As far as the back, that's where you're going to put the pole. And again, like I said, the top had an edge and I wanted to make sure it went up to the edge. This holds the pole in place. Even though these tomato steaks do have ridges, and that's why when you use a zip tie, it will, it will stay put and that works really good. It's better if you can get to the edge if you've got an edge. And so you've got stability there too on both ends. And then I put it in the middle. You can kind of judge if you want and guess for the middle, but I wanted to make sure I got it in the middle so the feeder will have a good balance to it once I get it into the yard and put it where I want. So I put it, this. I figured out where the middle was and figured that was close enough. And now I'm gonna make multiple holes on the lid that I put on for stability and it, as well as going through the lid and you'll watch and see here it went through the lid and into the actual container itself so I had stability from the container and the lid as well and that's all there is to it it's really simple it literally took me less than 10 minutes I had this feeder together am I boring you Just pull your zip ties through. I made sure again that because of this having a lip, that this would not go past the lip so it will hold on and give a little bit more stability. And then I just continue to put holes. A lot of times I feel as far as the zip ties, the more the better. In case one should ever pop or break off, it's good to have more than one. And so with that, I put multiple. You don't have to put that many, but I like they're so cheap, I put as, as many as I think I want to put on there to make sure it's going to sit still. But it's just the easiest bird feeder to make. You can have it together in minutes in your yard. And there is a right way and a wrong way on the zip. You want the pointy end to be pointed out. You go in the flat end. You'll figure it out. First time you do it wrong, you'll realize that that's the way it goes in. And once you do it, you'll, you'll be just you'll be using zip ties for everything. So I put um, five zip ties to hold it because three of them were on the lid itself, and then two of them were on the lid and the container too. And it really made it nice and strong. It's still in my garden now. It's been out there for three months, and I want to make sure I tested this thing really, really good. And that's it. You're done. This is it. There's nothing more to do except to take it out in the garden. Now you can stick this in a flower pot if you've got, let's say, a cement patio and you don't have any soil or dirt to stick it in. You can stick it in a flower pot and it will just free stand there really great and the birds just love it. The moment I put it out, it was full of birds. But like I said, if you don't have cement, you can stick it in a flower pot. If you do have a yard with dirt, you can stick it straight into the soil and just jam it in there and make sure it's in there solid and it will stay there. I've had one sitting out there for, like I said, months, and then I've moved it around for fun. I've had finches come in, the wild finches, the spice finches. We've had all kinds of birds. I have not had any rodents come in. Uh, the doves have come in. Yesterday I went out there and saw two doves sitting in there eating. It's been just so much fun to watch all the different birds. It rocks a little bit, but so do the trees. And then even the spotted toeys that are so shy and they normally only feed on the ground, the spotted toeys, which are beautiful, the black with the rust red, they've been coming in as well to feed in it. And of course, all the other birds have been coming in it. As far as keeping it rodent proof for your yard, the main thing is placement. Don't put it up against your bushes or they'll, 
the rodents or squirrels or whatever can climb into the bushes and then climb into the feeder. If you've got a rodent problem, keep it away from the bushes. You can be near the bushes, but not too close where anything can leap into it. And have it anywhere in your garden because it's placement when it comes to keeping it rodent proof and even cat proof. Placement. If you don't have a rodent problem, you can put it anywhere you want. The birds love it. You see it. It's in the yard. I've got all the beautiful white crowned sparrows coming to it and all kinds of songbirds coming to it. I have song sparrows and everything coming to the theater. So I hope I've given you an idea how to, how to make a rodent proof cheap bird feeder. If you've got a plastic shoe box, it won't cost you anything. And if you've got a stick, you're on your way. Just put it together and I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun. Have a great day and don't forget to eat what you go. Bye-bye.